Hey y'all, welcome back. Um, today is day one of the meal planning series, and I just want to talk a little bit about meal planning and how to get started. So if you are here from the meal planning class, um, welcome. My name is Tracy, and I am your teacher. And if you are here just because you watch the That Country Living um, YouTube channel, again, my name is Tracy, and welcome. Um, so I just want to talk a little bit. Sorry, Miller wants to be part of the video too. Um, so meal planning is a great way to stay organized with your food. Um, so when we talk about meal planning, um, that's just basically planning out what your meals are going to be for either a week or a month or, um, you know, a few days, whatever you're planning. Um, but some people also do something called meal prep. And that's just preparing their food ahead of time so that they can just grab and go, um, you know, as needed, whether it's for lunches or, you know, something already prepped for dinner. So it takes, you know, not as much time to cook um, or even I've had things prepped and cooked and everything. So all I had to do was heat it up either in the oven or the microwave or air fryer or whatever your choice is. But whatever you decide to do, whether you just plan your meals or you prep them or you do both, um, any and all of that can still be helpful. Okay. Lay down. Lay down. Sorry. Um, so let's first look at meal planning. Um, and before I go any further, let me just say, however you decide to do these things will depend on your family, your style, your likes, and your needs. Um, so what works for one person might not work for someone else. And then when planning your meals, um, I want to talk about a few things to consider. So the first thing is some sort of visual way to see what you're planning. Um, some people use the fancy chalkboards, they use whiteboards, um, and then others simply might just use a piece of paper um, as their version of a meal plan. But, um, well, right now I'm using a magnetic calendar on my refrigerator to plan just my dinners, and it seems to be working okay. However, I do want to get, like chalkboard or whiteboard type of thing um but I might have to create my own just because of what my needs are and what I want to plan um so because right now there's just simply not enough space and I'd rather use that calendar to put like events and things like that on the fridge just instead of my meals I'd rather have them like displayed somewhere else but that's me um, so you figure out what works for you as far as visually planning something. Um, if you want, I will have linked down below a copy of just a basic um, meal planning sheet that you can print off. Of course, if you want something more, you know, aesthetically pleasing, um, you can go to Google and just search. Um, there's other lots of free downloads that are, you know, a lot more prettier, but uh, mine was just basic because I do plan on using that until I can create um, the visual board that I want. Um, so, but anyways, you find what works for you, but you do need some sort of way to visually see what you're planning. That way you don't forget. Because um, I had things planned last week and of course I was out and about and I was like, wait a minute, what are we having? I forgot. And then I had to go home and look at the calendar. But anyways, so one, visual representation. Two, um, know what activities you have going on in the week and how much time you'll have to cook. So this is important so you can plan those quick meals on days that you have a lot going on and then save your more consuming meals for a different day. Um, there are days that I don't finish. Um, as early as I'd like to some days. Some days I'm, you know, just getting done at six o'clock with all of my things. And um, so, you know, I try to plan quick meals on those days so that I can have time to relax and, you know, just recuperate from the day. And of course, you know, if you have out, um, 
activities and extracurricular things, or maybe you're a parent and your kids have extracurricular things. Um, it's, you know, best to know what's going on when and how much time that you'll have. Um, the third thing is know what meals you need to plan. So I want to plan breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but that can be a lot and, um, you know, quite scary for some people, I guess. Um, but I want to plan all my meals for the most part. But um, just to start off with, you know, just plan lunches maybe, or just plan dinners. Of course, think about what your needs are and, you know, what you want or need to plan. I mean, yeah, plan, not plan. <laughs> um, so, you know, whatever works best for you. Next, we're gonna see what ingredients we already have. Um, it's best to use up what you already have, but of course there are times where we might be missing an ingredient or we're just not feeling what we have or we're tired of the same old, same old. Either way, you need to make sure you are prepared and have all the ingredients you need. It's kind of hard to cook something if you don't have all the ingredients. Um, you can substitute some things, but if it's a main ingredient and it kind of makes or breaks the dish, you need to know you have it um, or that it's available. So sometimes um, I might forget to thaw out chicken. And if I'm having a chicken recipe and there's no other meat involved, I gotta find something else to do. Um, so think about your ingredients, think about where they are. Are they frozen? Do you need to thaw them out? Do you need to pick them up from the store? That kind of thing. Um, as I'm running out of things, ingredients that I know I need, or as I'm planning and I'm looking and seeing what I have, I have a nice little, um, it's kind of like a notepad, but it's dry erasable on the fridge. And so I'll just write it all down, take a picture, head to the store, get it, and bring everything back. Um, and this kind of eliminates my trips as well, because I don't like going to the grocery store, especially every day. So I don't go to the grocery store a whole lot. Um, and then lastly, know what, um, know if you will be prepping or not. So as I mentioned before, some people plan their meals, but then some also prep their meals ahead of time. So as we go forward in this series, you will learn more about this. Um, but for now, if you do plan on prepping, just be aware that we'll, you will need something to put your food in, obviously. Um, some people can prep for just a few days, some prep for a whole week, some, I'll tell you, I went to a meal prepping class one time years ago, and we did like meals for a month, not that many meals, but we did like a few meals that could be spread out over the month. Um, and we had these gallons of bug bags and we just put different things in there. I think we were doing like crock pot meals or something. So we put the ingredients in there and we stuck them in the freezer. And then when you wanted to eat that dish, you just took out the Ziploc bag, thawed it out, put it in the crock pot and went on about your day. Um, that was kind of fun, but um, I don't know. I just plan a little different differently now, which you'll see in within the series. But, you know, know what you want to prep and how much you want to prep. Um, so like for me, prepping, I probably won't be prepping too much for dinner unless we're having leftovers, um, but, or if we're having, uh, so I make, sometimes I make these big casseroles and like I've just made chicken, bacon, mac and cheese. And so I've eaten off of it a couple of days, whatever does not get eaten today will go into a container and this container can go in the fridge. I mean the freezer. So I'll put it in the freezer and then I'll just save it for another day. But as far as that goes, that's probably the only thing that I'm going to do for that. Um, so my containers are glass and they have like the locking lids, which you'll see later on when I do the taco bake tonight. Um, but some people have this black containers from Amazon with the clear lid. Um, those are fine. 
Um, I know a lot of people that have had success with those. I kind of did not have success with that. Um, I bought the ones that had like three compartments and then I bought ones that didn't, it was just the one. And I had a, a ton of them and I like the fact that they're stackable and they take up, you know, not, not a whole lot of room, but some of mine ended up breaking. Some of mine, I'm not really sure what happened. They got thrown away. Um, lots of, lots of reasons and I'm not sure where some of them went. So that did not go well for me. Um, so I got these new glass ones and they can go in the freezer. I'm not sure if the other ones can, but, um, you find what works for you. What containers work for you? Are you going to, but think about, it, are you going to put them, be putting them in the freezer or are you just going to put them in the fridge, use them as needed? Um, oh, there's also these, I guess they're like silicone bags um and they're reusable those are fun to use i like those um it's you know instead of having a million ziploc bags you know um you can just use those they have all different sizes um if i think about it later i'll show you but i'll link some down below um because i do like those i don't think i've lost any of those yet i don't think i've lost any of those yet but Anyways, I do like those um, as like an alternative to Ziploc bags. That way I'm not using a bunch of those and, you know, they're going in the trash, creating lots of trash. I mean, they don't take up that that much space, but, you know, I just like to reuse things when I can. So um, th those bags are cool. They, I like those. And then, of course, like, if you just have, like, a sandwich or something in one of them, depending on your sandwich, you might just be able to reuse it. Um, but, and those are dishwasher safe, I believe. So, I don't have a dishwasher. I have to wash everything by hand. So, um, but I do like those bags, and I do like um, the containers that I had. Um, those meal prepping, like, black clear containers, um, those are good. I will link those below for people that, you know, that would work for. Um, I have some co-workers who use them. It works for them. It just, I just don't, don't work for me. Um, but, um, we'll talk more about prepping and planning and stuff as we go on. I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of background and just a little bit of an intro to everything. Um, tonight I will be cooking um, a taco bake and that is going to have dinner for tonight, dinner for tomorrow, lunch for Monday and Tuesday, and whatever's left is going to get packaged up into the containers and put in the freezer for a later date. Um, so I will meet you guys back here later on, uh, closer to dinner time so that we can make this taco bake. Bye for now. Hey guys, so we are in the kitchen making the taco bake. Um, I have went ahead and cooked the hamburger. And um, so for this one, we're just gonna kinda use things that we already have. So I have this red enchilada sauce. Um, I'd gotten this for, what did I get this for? Oh, and enchiladas, but I decided to use a different kind of make my own sauce. Um, so I'm just going to pour that in here for that enchilada sauce. So I have two pounds of hamburger meat, um, one can of the mild red enchilada sauce. I have a packet of taco seasoning. Um, So, one packet of the taco mix. And I'm just going to stir that up and get that combined really well. I'm 
just going to start with this because this is what I was using and I really don't feel like dirtying up any more dishes. But, um, so I've cooked the hamburger, I've drained it, now I'm adding this, mixing it up real good. So that's mix, mixed up good. I forgot an ingredient, so let me go get that. Okay, so we're going to put some corn in this. I need to use up these jars of corn. And um, so I figured this would be a good... leave that out if you want um this is not typically how i would do the taco bake um just want to try something new so i'm going to drain that into here I have another pot here that I was using earlier. I'm gonna have to wash it anyways. Um, okay, so I've drained the corn. I'm just gonna add that in there. Maybe not all of it. Hmm. Yeah, probably not all. about half. I think that's probably a good amount. Um, so that looks like that now. So beef, enchilada sauce, and corn. I'll do something else with the rest of this corn. Um, and then I've just got some cheddar cheese here. I don't have any Mexican cheese. But typically, I would use the Mexican cheese. And I'm just going to sprinkle this all inside. Alright. Mix that up. You can add cheese to your likings. Good. Now, all right. So now I just have a dish, a probably a nine by twelve ish or something. Um, so I'm just gonna pour this in there. Careful not to spill it. And then what I'm gonna do, so it's in my dish. Um, some people put Doritos on top of this. 
I don't have any Doritos. So I have these um, just regular like Mexican chips uh, from Sam's Club. And I, you know, I need to eat them up. So I am going to just take them and crush them along the top. I probably didn't need to buy such a big bag, but I bought them for salsas. And, well, there's only but so much that I can eat so, before they go bad. So, this is what we're using. And, of course, if you remember in the little piece from earlier, you know, I did mention it's best to use things that you already have on hand. It's always best. Just gonna put a good amount on top. I probably could have put more cheese down before, but we'll do it after. That's fine. And of course you can kind of, you know, make this recipe whatever you want. If you want Doritos on top, if you want to use the salsa, or if you want to use enchilada sauce, um, whatever you want to do, make it your own. Because this is all about what works for you, what your likes are, what your um, tastes are, what you can have and not have, if you're gluten free. I don't know that these chips are or not. We have a question for my cousin. Um, you know, any of that. So. I think we're going to use up right many of these chips. So I'm going to me crush them. I'm going to coat it. Cover it whole one. go to the store earlier so if you see some bags on the table um, I haven't put those away I wanted to go ahead and get dinner started because it's getting late okay oh and my oven is preheated to 375 so I'm gonna put this I'm gonna top it with some cheese um start with 15 minutes, but um, I think it's going to have to be 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes, um, just kind of based on the mac and cheese that I made, so, but the hamburger's cooked, so really you just want to brown everything, um, just bake it all the way, and well, the corn has to get cooked. Um, but anyways, and my oven's already gone off, it's ready to go, okay, but this is how it looks. We've got the meat, we've got the corn, the taco seasoning, the cheese, the chips, more cheese, and so I think it is ready to put in the oven, and I will check it after 15 minutes, and then bring you guys and show you the finished results. So, let's start with 15. Um, I will be back when it's done to show you what it looks like. See you in a bit. Okay, okay so the timer did go off. Um, and I did put it back in for five more minutes. So I think now everything should be good. And yes, it's browned on top. Um, I think with the corn, it needed that extra five minutes. Um, but turn that off. Um, I guess a couple of these back 
on and show you. So the cheese is all melted. It's browned on top. And it looks really, really good. So, let's see. We'll taste it. As I get it all over me. I've already spilt Dr. Pepper and made a mess. So, you know. Hmm. That's really good. Um, I would, however, like to have lettuce with this, but I don't have any, so... Like, do with what you have. Um, but if you want, you could have added lettuce or you can add lettuce once you plate it up. Um, any of that. But I am going to eat this for dinner. I am going to put... So these are the containers I was talking about earlier. So they have these little snap lids. And um, so this this is the small size. They have a bigger one. Um, but this is the one that I'm going to use for my lunch, and I'll put that in there later. Um, not right now. I want it to cool off a little bit. Um, so after dinner, I'll probably put that in here. For lunch, um, I'll need two of those. So I'm going to have one for Monday, one for Tuesday. And then this will get eaten tonight and tomorrow, and then whatever's left. This is the big container. So, big one, small one. So lunch, and then I'll put a bunch in here. I'll fill up one of these with whatever is left after tomorrow to kind of save for a couple nights of dinner a different time. And if there's going to be any left. Whatever's left, I'll probably just stick in here. Um... Yeah, I should have at least one of these. Maybe if it's not enough, I'll put it in a little one and save it for lunch. Um, but that is, um, I think that's it. Um, but we'll, you know, have that planned and prepped for the next two days. I think that's as far as it's going to go. I don't really want to eat anymore. I don't want to have like three days of this in a row. So, um, I have that. Then, as far as planning goes for breakfasts or this whole week, um, I did buy some cereal just because it's kind of late and I didn't have time to cook anything else. Um, I had some other chores going on today. So, I did pick up some cereal and milk. Um, I'll have that for breakfasts. Like I said, I already have lunch for Monday and Tuesday. Um, Wednesday... I'll just kind of see. Tuesday, I'll see what's going on. Um, but Wednesday, I do have some little meals um, left over in the freezer that I can just take out Tuesday night and have that thought out for Wednesdays. Um, and then on Wednesday, we can look at making something for Thursday and Friday. So, no, I did not plan for the entire week this week. Um, just half the week. But that's okay. Like I said. You do what works best for you, what you have time. Don't stress about it, because then you're not going to do it. Um, just do it as you can. Do it on your time. Just do something, okay? You can work yourself into doing it consistently, consistently and differently later. Just start out with something. So hopefully this helps. Hopefully, um, if you try the taco bake, um, do whatever works for you, whatever you like, have on hand, all of that good stuff. Um, but this is just what I did tonight. So, anyways, I'm going to go eat some of this. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your night or day or whatever you're watching. Um, I'll see you guys soon.